there's a lot of stupid bad names anyway, so it doesn't really matter in the end. Uh, it may <laughs> matter at the beginning. So there were a lot of people said, ah, this is stupid. But there were also a lot of people said, that's ah, actually pretty funny and cool. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. All right, so Thomas, thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. I know these are hectic times um, and you've, you know, Napalm's been grinding you through this, you know, press cycle like crazy. I know it's been busy, uh, but that's good. Busy is good when you're launching an album. The album Absolutely. is out as we're talking. Usually, you know, I interview people before a launch or leading up to the release, but it's really fun also to talk to somebody who's just released an album. Um, I'm sure it was a bit of a nervous release cycle for all the all, all the clear reasons. Um, I know that you got a lot of feedback and a lot of positive momentum before the launch and the singles and all that. All, that's all great. But when that launch day actually happened, walk me through your your roller coaster of emotions uh, yeah. last Friday. It's basically like an avalanche of, of stuff coming onto you. You know, it's like we were on tour. It was the first, um, was it the first? No, it was actually the third show that we uh, played ever. Uh, mm -hmm. First tour we were on, plus um, this re whole release, plus all the interviews coming in, it's, uh, it's great, like crazy. I've never experienced that before with my uh, right. old band as well. So that was um, kind of astounding, but also in a good way, of course. So, so the interest was there from, from people, from media, and uh, um, especially from the fans which is really satisfying in the end because that's why you do the whole music stuff, right? You want to you know, right. show it to your fans and, and make people happy with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that, um, although you're not German and Napalm is also not German, it's an Austrian company, um, but fair to say that in a few days from now, when it's Friday and it's a very special day always in the week when the German charts come out, that that'll right. be a bit of an... You'll, you'll be pretty excited that morning. Uh, is that a fair statement? <laughs> <laughs> you can say like that. I think the German market is like it's the biggest metal market in the world. So right. this is basically the measure that that, it, um, that there's to beat, basically. I mean, if we can reach into top 10, that would be amazing. You know, that would be a dream come true because that would be, I think, probably the best power metal debut that ever happened though. <laughs> That's what we we're aiming at, at least. One better. Metal is has always been more popular in Germany than in other countries, for sure. Um, Napalm has been very successful recently in that market. Um, and a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it is tied to what seems to be this golden age of and I'm gonna, and I want to use this in a, in the most positive and respectful way possible. Gimmicky power metal, where it's it's yeah. it's it's not enough at this point to have a really good sounding record, but there has to be more going on. And we see that not just with yourself and your past, but also you know Power Wolf, uh, um, uh, Sabaton, uh, Ailstorm, yeah. uh, you know Windrose. Like uh, th there there is a lot going on. Um, um, which is fun. It creates, it opens the door to so many fun directions. Uh, for you as an artist, is that something that can also feel a little limiting at times? Yeah, actually, I'm the kind of guy who just likes dressing up stupidly and, uh, and, and act on stage as well. Right, um, right. You know, uh, it's always been a dream. Even when I had my first band when I was 17, I dressed up uh, like I felt a, a rock star would dress up. And I, um, probably it's because um, I used to listen to all those old bands who also dressed up, like Alice Cooper, for example. Right, and, right. Uh, the, it's not a new thing. It, it always was oh, yeah. like that. Kiss, for example. Um, they probably wouldn't have become that famous if they wouldn't have painted their faces and looked like, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the track show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. it's quite important. Uh, to have an image on stage and um, and also an image um, with the whole setup that you have. 
Uh, now nowadays, of course, it's a bit more than it used to be. It, it has to be better every time. So that's also the motto of our band: like one better. You have to to beat what if what he did in the past. And um, right. I mean, you see that with the movies as well. You see that in um, video games, everything gets a bit better with the time, or at least it looks better. So, right. Um, the, you. You mentioned like I always wanted to dress up in a silly way, so let me just ask a very serious, very deep question. Uh, when was the very first time that you were dressed up on stage and go and went like, "Oh crap, this is not as flexible as I thought it was going to be"? <laughs> oh, I, I think it was actually with Corey Hammer, to be honest, with the, with the armor stuff that I bought. Right. Uh, this was a always a dream to look like Link from The Legend of Zelda because I'm a huge Legend of Zelda fan. So okay. I was searching for a green armor on the internet, and I found um, an armor in a in a Polish shop called called uh, Phone Forge. Okay. And back then I was a student, so I didn't have much money. So I really had to to write this guy and say, you know, uh, I'm in a band. Uh, would you would you send it a bit cheap for me? So maybe we'll we'll buy other stuff from you. And then it was really nice and sent it for like 500 euros, I think, oh, which was still a lot of money for me back then. But uh, <laughs> I mean, for what was, it was worth, yeah, yeah. Worth it in the end, yes. But the, awesome. the first dress up I did was actually with my first band already. So I was wearing <laughs> wearing self made uh, pants made of garbage uh, sacks, you know. And uh, the good thing about my armor is I still can go to the toilet, but not sit down, you know, so it's a bit limited. There you go. Okay, but at least you, you know, if emergencies are there, you're 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 taken care of. Good, yeah. good. Uh, that that's important. Okay. Now um, we talked about, you know, uh, it's a golden age for this, you know, over the top. Let's call it over the top power metal. You guys on this album. I mean, there's obviously a lot of elements that people that have followed your journey and also other people in the band, by the way. Um, and we, we see some people that we've seen in other bands before, but we might not see them on stage that well because of certain <laughs> dress up antics. But um, you guys are not. Like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, now, you guys don't just stick to traditional power metal uh you 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 infuse your music with more stuff you mentioned you're a big video game guy both pop elements but also like video game soundtrack elements are very much in this music uh, making it a little bit more a little bit more diverse maybe a little bit more out of the ordinary um was Absolutely. that a, a conscious decision to go like hey we want to take the sound that people expect from me. We want to be respectful to that expectation, but also kind of take it in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically I wanted to have that link to my past. <laughs> There's another self expression, but yeah. um, <laughs> also bring the music to to another level. I mean, um, we, we wanted to broaden up it a bit, not just for power metal nerds. Uh, and I think we, we managed to achieve that with the, with this kind of uh, album where we have the power metal classic songs, but also the, uh, the, the more uh, electronic, maybe even German Schlager songs, I would call them, like, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what Schlager yeah, yeah. is? Like, uh, yeah, some, Schlager, some yeah. kind of really bad pop songs, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, it, it kind of fits with metal very well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. example, Electric Callboy do that quite uh, <laughs> successful, and they were also um, a benchmark, you know, we said, yeah, we want to make party songs with a cool story, which is a really weird thing to do, but it kind of worked. Yeah, so uh, that's actually an interesting thing, though, because um, this discrepancy, if you will, or this balance of, well, it's fun, it's a, it's party, but there's this whole world that you delve into as well, which I can only imagine, given that you know you love Legend of Zelda, Zelda and stuff like that, is important to you. Reality is, a lot of people that come to your show, whether it's whether you it's your own headlining show or whether it's a festival show or whatever. A lot of people will come to the show just to have a fun time and just party on yeah. the music. And sometimes the, the the unfortunate side effect of bands that have a big, you know, over the top presence and, and, and dress up and what have you, that people sometimes, unlike what you might expect, don't really take the time to delve into the story that's underneath that and, and, and stay a little yeah. bit more on that surface, if you will. Is that for you? You know, given the attention that you bring to when you're creating that and the depth of the story, 
not everybody's gonna pick up on that or not everybody's even going to listen to the lyrics and just gonna have some fun is is that a shame in your eyes uh or or don't you really care no. i don't care actually because um there's a lot of people who do um go into the story very deeply and that's that's fine and that's great actually i really um, enjoy seeing people having fun with the, the lyrics as well but right. in the end most people i mean that's just the reality are there for the fun part um drinking at concerts and, right. and listening to cool music that's bad and, and if there's some chant along lyrics that's great they can do it or if, it, if it's too complicated you know most people just say yeah it's not my my cup of tea so that's the reality i guess You mentioned a few times already, like, you know, my past and connections and some lyrics. I want to do my very best not to focus on what happened in the past. And, and, and let's just talk about, uh, you know, what's ahead of you. You, do, you don't always make that easy for me with, with certain lyrics that a lot of people already picked up on. Um, <laughs> where, you know, certain glory has left certain hammer and all that kind of stuff. And then yeah. out of all the places in the galaxy, we, we somehow find ourselves at times back in Scotland. Um, I, I'm not gonna ask you about the past, but reality is that just as much as reality that people come to the show just to have a good time, reality is that people are going to compare and people are going to put the two side by side. Um, is that something that, um, given that the three other people in the band were, were not part of that journey, um, is that something that you guys had like a bit of a conversation about up front where you go, where just because you know that when you are starting Angus Mix Six, that's that's a roller coaster, and there might be elements that backfire as well, or where you'll see nasty comments and and, and so on. Is was that a conversation yes. at all? Was that was that you know a little bit of weight on your shoulders? Uh, well, actually, it was Sape's idea with the name Angus Mix Six. So he said, you know, what can we do? You, you're Angus Mix Five, but uh, now it has to be one better. So what's better than five six? I said, what? I can do this. Uh, five is not, a, it's not a number, you know? I was like yeah. that in, in the beginning. I said, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just funny. It's just a joke, you know? It's a wordplay. And uh, then I said, I said, I've got to sleep over this. You know? And then um, after a few days, I thought, hmm, actually, <laughs> it is quite funny in a, yeah. in a stupid way. But, you know, who cares? Because this will, will give us a great, a great attention from people. So they will still connect me with my old uh, role that I had. Um, and then actually was Sip at some point said, you know, maybe you should change the name after we released the first press um, media thing. He said, yeah, we might actually change the name. It's probably better. And I said, no, not now. <laughs> now it's, it's out already. It that. is out there. Yeah, for sure. We stick to it. And I mean, the name of a band, there's a lot of stupid band names anyway, so it doesn't really matter in the end. <laughs> it maybe matter at the beginning. So. There were a lot of people said ah, that's stupid, but there was a lot of people said that's ah, actually pretty funny and cool. And so this, there was a lot of talk about it, and that that's what we wanted basically. You know? Right. But in the end, the band name will you know it's it's just there, and uh, it will be filled with with the music. And in the end, it's the music that counts, uh, and everything else, not the band name. We already talked about how kind of influential Napalm has been in your journey, um, the record company, but also within the artist roster of that label, there seems, at least it looks like that from the outside in as a very genuine kind of group of friends now that we see popping up everywhere. Um, yeah. You know, like it, 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 people from in between your band, Foyashwans at Infinitum, uh, War King Serenia, like, you know, we see the same people, like Burning Witches, you know, like, even if it's just playing a part in a video, uh, in a music video, like, we see the same people kind of like popping up. It looks genuine. Is that also the case? Like, is there just a group of friends that happen to all get along and play for the same label? I mean, um, we know each other a bit for for a while, actually, and um, 
I can really say we were on tour now five days and it was just a great feeling overall. The whole the whole comp uh, tour comp company right. and the whole the crew were um, really nice people and it's great to be on tour like that. Um, I mean, I've had other um, <laughs> other um, experiences in the past, you know, so I don't want to have this anymore. I really yeah. want to be with, with cool people who are nice. That's basically the most important thing about making music. And if you don't have this, then uh, it's just not fun to be on tour. And uh, I mean, I don't have to do music. I, I just like doing it. But uh, if it's not fun anymore, it doesn't yeah, make yeah. sense. Right. Yeah, you mentioned yeah, Sid came up with the uh, with the name and the concept. He reached out to you like, "Hey, let's do something." He's obviously also involved in other bands, um, but but now all of a sudden there's this whirlwind of attention for Angus Mixix. And um, is there um, is is there at all a, a if if anything a scheduling conflict uh, that that um, you need to because I know that obviously with uh, uh, Orden Ogan, they were going quite hard as well, and they were pushing very hard. Yeah, and we saw yeah. them on festivals and what have you. Uh, I think they were playing like they had a festival run two summers ago, where they were everywhere. Um, yeah, exactly. They probably not necessarily just want to stop everything be to allow Angus Mix Six to do everything. Like, what's that like? Um, in the beginning, it was like the plan to um, just have someone stand in for for save if. He wouldn't be able to play the show because of Ord Nogan. But now, after the first uh, run that we did with first ones, um, he said, "You know, actually, I just want to do it forever." <laughs> and he really threw it into his role as Sable on the Arch Demon. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, he did, he does it really well, actually. So uh, I think it's for sure that he will uh, stay as the as the main uh, guitar player in uh, in Angus Mac Six, uh, also on stage. That's what he wants to do, and that's what I want to do. So, uh, yeah, as long as as it's as fun as it is, uh, he'll he'll be on stage with us, and we try to to um, have an album out every year, um, Angus Mac Six, and then the other year, or Nogan. So this will probably be okay because the touring usually comes with the album as well. Right. So there, there shouldn't be too many conflicts. Hopefully, you, of course, you never know. But if there would be, we try to to. Um, have us play at the same festival the same day, so we can do both shows, basically. Uh, Thomas, thank you so much for, for taking some time here today. I know these are hectic days, and to be honest, uh, I wish you could just step away from all of that and just kind of enjoy this ride, because whether or not it will be the most successful Power Melt debut, a project or a new band always only gets to release that first album once and i i really hope that you get to really experience and enjoy that to the fullest so i hope it's not too crazy anymore uh uh interview cycle wise and i'll keep my fingers crossed to see some nice results on friday coming from the german charts um, thank you very much i hope so too and it was a pleasure talking to you jasper or Jasper, if you go back to <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Awesome, man. Well, hey, I hope to catch you this summer on one of the festivals. And uh, I wish you yeah. all the best with the continued release cycle. Have a awesome. wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. You too. Huh? And uh, awesome. see you there. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.